morning guys as you can tell it's early so bear with me <laughs> we're gonna go largemouth fishing today we got high pressure cold front and the lake is clearer than what I'm used to so once again did I mention it's early bear with us we're going to try this out at the gangling style. Okay, so I get the smallest fish I've ever caught, pretty much, here. <laughs> Whatever, not bad for first cast, I'll take it. <laughs> I gotta show you this new bait I've been fishing. Show it to you later. I got a feeling on this one. The feeling was real. Oh, it's a good fish, too. It's early. <laughs> not bad, not a bad start. The first two were small. I think you guys seen one of them. That's a decent, that's a decent large one. <laughs> oh, so beautiful. You know what? I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get a quick a quick weight on this fish just out of curiosity. Okay. So you want to be careful doing this. You want to stay away from the gills. Yeah, that's over three. So 3.4-ish. I don't know if you can see that. All right. <laughs> nice thing with the fish this size. The head's so big, it's easy to navigate through. <laughs> All right, a little under three and a half. Let this girl go. It's a big yipper on that thing. That was a snag. This is this is a big one too. Oh my! This is a cell. I thought I thought it was snag. <laughs> There's no way. How big is it? I didn't I didn't see a good a good shot. This fish is staying deep. Oh, that's oh that's a big largey. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> there she comes. <laughs> Did you see the yepper on that thing? You thought I had a big mouth? Check this thing out. <laughs> That's bigger than the other one. Oh wow, 
And that hook just slipped out. And to think I was snagged. That's why. <laughs> Set the hook first, ask questions later. Oh, wow. Boys. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's a beautiful, beautiful piggy. Same thing. I want to weigh this fish so I can get him back in the water while I get the scale ready. Whew, I'm starting to shake. That's a... <laughs> that fish is heavier than three and a half, I guarantee you. Well, we'll tack on another pound. Four point four, four point three. Okay. A little under four and a half. That is a gorgeous specimen. We're gonna let this fish go. Fish on. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Not bad. What's definitely not bad about this is it's another one. Numbers. Oh. We got numbers and size. Oh no. Oh! You know what? I was gonna say this fish. We did inhale it, but um Jam my finger down there, perfect. You know what? So, not huge, but yet another fish. We'll take it. It's one thing I like about uh, wacky rigging, the fact that you want to use fairly large hooks. Um, you know what, to be honest with you, this is not specified as a wacky hook. Uh, this is a, oh, a size one. Gamagatsu octopus, but it's still big enough that even even when the fish has it somewhat deep, um, you're still able to get your finger in the gap of the hook to pop it backwards and pull it out safely so the fish isn't harmed. Awesome. Fishing right now is on fire, and I don't know if it's if it's the lake, I don't know if it's this new bait. I think it's a combination of both. Um, I'm just gonna re-rig re this here. So I positioned my O-ring a little bit further up the worm after that fish, the O-ring was right about here. So reposition the O-ring, get it back. As you can see, I'm not fishing it right in the middle. I'm a little bit off center. And look at those wrinkly fingers. You can, you can tell we're catching fish. That is awesome. Anyways, when I put the hook through, I don't just go underneath the O-ring. I hook it a little bit into the meat of the worm as well. Just like so. I just find you get better positioning when you get a hit. Your O-ring doesn't slide or anything like that. Um, that's the way I'm doing it. Let's see if I can go two casts in a row with catching a fish. Whoa. Cast number two on this spot. And fishing I guess what they call stick baits or wacky rigging it. It's a obviously very slow presentation. And, <clears throat> and as you can see, I'm fishing weightless right now too. So it takes a little while for this, for the worm to drop on its own. Um, one of my favorite stick baits to fish is the Gary Yamamoto Senko, because um, it actually, it has a fast um, sink rate. 
and that's obviously the advantage fishing a lake like this where it's where it's quite deep right off the drop off. Um, however, this new Berkeley Power Bait, the Max Scent, um, it also has a very fast drop rate. So as you can see what I'm doing, I'm casting it out and I'm giving it some time to get down. But then I'm actually working it pretty quick right now, uh, mainly because the fish are active. So I'll give them the worm a little more action. Oh ho! You know what I was saying about uh, those big hooks being an advantage? You see where that is? See where the hook is? So obviously it, it, it's deep, but it's not doing the fish any harm. It's hooked in the roof of the mouth, right? So the best thing to do in this situation, I mean, if you're, if you're a little more inexperienced, feel free to grab the pliers, but keep tension on the line. And you can actually try to do this with Shoney at the same time. You can actually put your finger right down into the shank, give it a pop down, pull it out, beautiful. Oh, and there's fish jumping there. I'm gonna let this one go and take a cast. Take one more cast right by that dock. Try not to knock Cam's head off when I do this. Oops. Oops. Okay, can you see the line in the light? <laughs> yeah, so folks, this is why sometimes people do not like it when you fish their docks. There's uh, a lot of anglers disrespectfully will just break off and leave hooks in their dock where their, where their kids, their pets get hooks in them and stuff like that. Obviously, I'm not gonna do that. I feel bad for doing this right off the bat. So anyways, I'm gonna quietly row over and get my hook out of the dock. Hopefully these people are watching. <laughs> Once again, obviously a horrible cast, <laughs> but you know what, it happens. The last thing I wanna do is leave any litter or garbage or hooks in a personal dock. Folks, it's as easy as that. Have respect. It's pulling the boat around. Got to keep the camera guy happy here. <laughs> keep the sun at the face. All right, another fish. <laughs> Nothing huge. Yeah, numbers. That was actually first cast of the spot. And quickly, ooh, you know what? Yes. Quickly readjust my rig. All right, everybody. So one of our fantastic viewers commented that he wanted to see more of what we were actually using on our day of fishing. So here's what we're using today: a G. Lewis NRX rod. Shimano CI4 reel. You can't get a lighter combo than that. Um, I got uh, 20 pound Max Quattro line on there. Uh, as far as bait, Berkeley Power Bait, the new Max Scent is absolutely unbelievable. We were weighing our fish on a very accurate Rapella scale using 15 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon as a leader so the fish didn't see my braid. Uh, you cannot forget about the Dr. Slick pliers. Not only can I cut my line with that, um, I can use the pliers to take the fish, or take the hooks out of the fish, sorry. And one aught Gamagatsu octopus hooks. And it was all stuffed in my wonderful Plano tackle bag.
regardless, that's not bad. That's not a bad one. That's another, that's another fish shallow. This is unbelievable. Ah, this, it's not huge. Oh. Ah, I can try boat flipping. <laughs> Did it. All right, not bad. Not bad. What do you get? <laughs> Are you situated here? Ooh, look at this. I don't know if you can see this fish is choking up some food. What is it? Just looks like insects and stuff. That. Yep, actually dragon looks like dragonflies, dragonfly larva, damselfly larva. Cool. So that fish was probably feeding off the surface at one point. Or not, I shouldn't say larva, nymphs, nymphs slash actual adult dragonflies, and there's more in the mouth. Let me get it. <laughs> Is that not gross or what? All right, cool. Anyways, we've had, oh, actually there's a water strider. That is really cool. I've never ever seen a fish eat a water strider before, but there is evidence right there. That is cool for my whole life. That's the first time I've ever seen that. That is really cool. And there's still more food in it, but poor fish. I can get him back in the water. That's really neat. Enough's enough. I, that last fish stole my bait. They're starting to short strike it, but it's all good. We had a great morning. Uh, we caught a bunch of largemouth. Two big ones, lost a few big ones too. Um, that's all good, that's fish and that's normal. Uh, you know what we're gonna call it a day. Once again, everybody, thanks for watching. Don't hesitate to like and subscribe to not only Facebook, but here on YouTube. And click that notification bell if you want to see more videos as epic as this one. Swimming across this lake. Why wouldn't you tie some sort of a harness and a bait behind you? Like 50 feet of 20 pound mono and a big deep diving crankbait.